Good morning and welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I'm Kyla Watson here with Phil Long. How are you doing, Phil? I'm doing very good this morning. Good. It's a windy day today, so we took <laughs> yeah. it inside. Yeah, you have that occasionally in the upper Midwest, but it seems like something we've been fighting all fall. Unfortunately, you know, a discussion topic for today, but fires and so forth. It's, it's a huge challenge when it's like this during harvest, but it's also a challenge to do videos too. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, how are things going out there? Going good. You know, we've got a lot of dealers and customers calling and telling us, you know, great yield results, which is exciting, but it's also been a challenge. I mean, it's it's uh, crazy. I, I personally have never seen the, the moistures that we're harvesting crops at right now. We've got beans that are down. If you've still got soybeans out in the field, six to eight percent mm -hmm. in some cases and, and corn coming out under under 14, under 13 in some cases. Um, just unheard of uh, getting that dry a grain in the field. So, uh, but you know, good progress. Like I said, other than the wind, uh, I've heard several farmers say they've stopped or halted operations because of a, a fire scare or so mm -hmm. forth. So it's yeah, it's a huge challenge with how dry it's been. Um, but I, I know even the farmers up in the north I've talked to are doing good and getting crops out. So it's it's good all around. We we just we don't need the snow up north, and we just need to get things uh, finished up so that we can move on to tillage or not have to worry about the, the fires. Right, absolutely. Very different issues than last year. Yeah, yeah every year it gives us challenges. Mm -hmm. so. All right, well today we're going to be talking about just that, our low moisture and what that means for corn still out in the field. Sure, yeah. So like I mentioned, you know, we've got really dry situation out there. <laughs> I, I, every day it seems like I talk to a different farmer that's like, wow, this is, you know, it's coming out at 14% or 13 and a half or whatever the case. It seems like we're talking about soybean moisture, you know, not corn moisture. Mm -hmm. um, and I know in, in some of our research is coming out on soybeans at six to eight percent. So it's just unheard of how dry it is. And that presents a lot of challenges, but also a very common topic that comes up this time of year, um, which is phantom yield loss. Mm -hmm. So thinking about that and where we sit right now, um, it's, it's an interesting uh, idea that's been around for quite a while. A lot of the research was done, you know, even back in the 70s and 80s, still being done now. And there's a lot of uh, discrepancies maybe and people on both sides of the fence about phantom yield loss. But to understand phantom yield loss, it simply refers to kind of this idea that, you know, there's shrink or uh, that moisture loss from the kernel in the field, letting it dry down in the field. You lose that kernel moisture, lose that weight and lose yield. Um, so there has been research I know from Purdue and, and other universities um, that have showed that there can be up, you know, anywhere from 0.6 to over 1.5 percent yield loss um, per point of moisture that you let it dry in the field, which is a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And we hear a lot of farmers say the same thing. A lot of farmers start at around that 25 percent moisture in terms of harvest, um, and it, and it does show, it, you know, it seems like from my experience personally that. Uh, we do see a little higher yields, you know, earlier on when you start like, you know, when it's higher moisture. But, um, you know, either either way, like I said, it's a little bit of a controversial topic. You know, I, I did some of the math on this just looking at it as I went through, you know. So if you think about where corn comes at R6. So if we sit at black layer physiological maturity, we're around that 30 percent, 28, 32 percent, depending on the hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, it can vary. Um, but that's typically where you start that, that black layer process at. And then from there, it dries in the field. And you usually want it to dry some because you don't want to have to pay all those drying charges. So I just figured roughly from 25 to 15%, if you were to let it dry this year, mm -hmm. from 25% down to 15, which we're already past 15, so um, it's, it's crazy, but you know, easily dried that far in the field. Um, and unfortunately, what I came out with using about a three and a half cent drying charge at our local elevator um, that you'd need about 22 to 25 bushel to make up for that. So if you're at a 220 bushel yield and, and it dried down to about 198, mm -hmm. uh, it, you would need about 22 to 25 bushels to make up for that drying charge. Okay. So that's, that's quite a bit. Um, right. and, and in this case, it may not have paid for itself. It would have been close, but obviously I, dry, I went from 25% moisture down to 15. So that's 10 whole points of moisture. Um, that's a that's that's a lot long ways, and not everybody lets it go quite that far. So it's a little bit extreme. But the the idea is that you got to make sure you understand the drying charge versus how much yield you're going to lose. So the the whole point of this to me is, you know, as we continue going and we understand, we continue to understand our hybrids better. 
this is something that you can do and try in the field. I mean, a lot of farmers have done it. Uh, let a field sit, you know, start harvesting early and then, you know, go do something else and come back and, and finish that a little bit later when it's drier. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can understand better by doing it on your own farm and your own soils, your own area. Um, and to help understand that process and, and how much, you know, the drying charge versus the yield loss is going to affect in your situation. So uh, a good opportunity for on-farm research and personally I think that's about the only way you'll truly understand this topic. Um, but um, it's one that's important. However, mm -hmm. we're uh, mid-October and in our case we're already below 15%. So that's off the table in my opinion right so we're we're past the phantom yield loss phase now we just got to get it out of the field right well i was so. just going to ask so now looking at where we are in harvest now what is the bottom line for farmers out there harvesting yeah it's uh i don't want to say a scary situation but yeah i've been i know even on our own farm um, we've been doing some combining and, and seeing some of the corn go down as we go across the field. It's that dry. So mm -hmm. the stalks are dry. We're having stock lodging, obviously. When you're down at 13, 14% moisture on the ear, that plant is dry. It's lost its stay green. It's, it's done. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's lost enough moisture that everything is, is given up on that plant. So one key thing is the ear shank. So the ear shank and the stalks, obviously, there's not enough moisture left in there likely, unless you used a fungicide um, that is gonna keep that ear attached or that stalk standing straight. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of wind going on, it seems like. Um, that's creating challenges more than just fire, but also corn going down, uh, ear losses right. at the head. So ear droppage and, and stalk lodging is a huge uh, factor right now. One that I would really prioritize your fields, you know, whether it's early as planted or a certain hybrid, you know, hybrids that have open husks or are going to be drier. I know I've talked to some of our uh, our customers that have open husk hybrids and they're they're definitely drier. Uh, but at this point, everything is dry. So mm -hmm. those are the two biggest things. The other thing I, I've noticed a lot, you know, as you get drier moisture, obviously, you have a lot more. But the, the term is to me is butt shelling, you know, so it's shelling mm -hmm. as it come down and, and hits those stripper plates or the deck plates on the combine, you know, and it's important to adjust those correctly. You know, if you have a newer combine, you can adjust those uh, on the go, which is nice. If you don't, then likely you're not changing them a lot. But um, as we get drier and drier corn down to 15, 13 percent, that butt shelling is going to get worse. Um, so the more it's going to shatter essentially like soybeans, you're going to have worse loss right at the head. So it's mm -hmm. easy to see that, you know, you can do a, a hard stop in the field or, you know, get out like I do and, and watch the combine as it's going across the field and see which one or just stop, pick up the head, shut the combine down and see what's under the combine. So, mm. you know, a lot of ways to kind of figure out where that, that shelling is coming from. Obviously, butt shelling is going to be right at the row. Right. Uh, if it's coming out the back of the combine, it's going to be kind of focused over the, the center. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's shelling out um, from those deck plates, it'll be right at the base of the stalk. So just some important things to remember. Um, but that, that's a huge key right now that seems like we're seeing a lot of it as we continue to harvest and it keeps getting drier. It just seems like we've had a lot of heat and when to get that moisture out of there that's going to continue to be a problem mm -hmm. do you have any numbers that you'd like to share about what that loss would look like and equate to sure so uh, you know in corn uh, if you're looking out the back of the combine like i said and the best thing to do is kind of get a gauge for like i said the center part of the combine and then what you're losing around each row so that you know where it's coming from but two kernels and one square foot is going to be a one bushel per acre loss Wow, that so adds up quick, doesn't it? It, it adds up very quickly. Um, and typically, you know, you can see, especially when we get down to this this point of, of moisture, 13, 14%, which is really unheard of. Like I said, in my lifetime, I can't say I've harvested crop or corn at that moisture. Um, but, you know, you can see upwards of 6 to 10% loss just at the head um, in terms of shatter and so forth. So make sure that you're checking that getting out, slowing down. I know this is not the time that we want to slow down, but mm -hmm. um, it's important to get out and check that and make sure that you're adjusting it and doing all that you can to, to keep as much, you know, at this point you've, you've earned that grain, so you want to get as much of it in the tank and into the co-op. Right, so. okay, very good. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add this morning? No, I just I just hope for continued to slow, slow the wind down would be nice, uh, and I hope everybody stays safe, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. Everything about this harvest, uh, not only, you know, checking things and, and being around equipment, but just stay safe. All right. Very good. So. Well, thank you for joining us You're this welcome. morning. And like Phil said, stay safe and have a good harvest.